Hello, I'd like to welcome everyone to our data governance with Power Apps webcast. So the hosts of this webcast today will be myself and Lauren. Lauren is based out of our Boston office and I'm based out of the Sao Paulo office in Brazil. And we're both data and analytics consultants. Our contact info is here. So if you're interested in any of the topics presented during the webcast, feel free to reach out to us and we will be glad to help. So here's our agenda for today. We will be going through six different sections. So first I will give an intro to Fargood for those who don't know who we are. Then I'll be going through an intro to data governance followed by more specific details on Power Apps. Then I'll hand over to Lauren and she's gonna give a demo of how data governance with Power Apps work. And then she will present some business considerations and then a quick wrap up of the event. So first of all, a far good overview and who we are. We're an independent consultancy firm in the data and analytics business, and we're specialized in data science, data visualization, and data engineering. We are a global company having offices in different locations around the world, which are the UK, the US, Brazil, India, and Singapore. We offer different kinds of services, strategies, and solutions. So we do application design and development, planning and business modeling. We also offer data and analytics services, including ML and AI activities. We also do strategies and roadmaps, maintenance and support, and training and adoption. Here we have some of our main, main clients. So we work mainly with four industries. Industries are banking, insurance, pharma, and CPG but we also work with customers in many other industries too. The companies we work with are usually large blue chip companies and we value building a long lasting relationship with our clients so we can build solutions and deliver value as much as possible. As I mentioned before, we are an independent firm, which means we don't work with any specific technology. Instead, we build partnerships with different technology providers in the data and analytics space such as Microsoft, Databricks, Tableau, AWS, and others. This independence gives us a holistic perspective and an unbiased approach when working with our clients to develop a solution. So moving on to data governance, according to Gartner, data governance is the specification of decision rights in an accountability framework to ensure the appropriate behavior in the valuation, creation, consumption, and control of data and analytics. That might seem a bit complicated, but in a more simplified manner, data governance is a framework of principles applied strategically in organizations to codify how people, tools, and processes will interact with data. We can review how to implement data governance by analyzing the main objectives of its implementation. So when we think about the importance of data governance, it should be taken into consideration the main goals that companies seek to achieve when applying data governance principles to their business. So first we have auditable, which is basically understanding where changes are coming from. So data governance allows individuals to really understand and trust the data that's flowing through if they know how, when, or who is making any sort of transformations. Next is standardized, which I believe is one of the biggest issues we see at our clients, um, which is the need to bring together loads of data sources that are all managed separately by different people. Uh, people usually tend to use Excel and other manual spreadsheets to track things, and that usually makes reporting really difficult. So bringing together all these data sources with different columns, data types, and more into a standard schema that is accessible by business users will allow for much easier structured reporting in data, in data visualization tools. Now we have efficient. So when we have this single source of truth that has this universal schema, it makes it much easier to automate processes around it to take the manual element out of things. So having a tool that sets the structure for users and allow them to input data in a single format or schema reduces a lot the manual effort of any subsequent layers. Now we have secure, which is the management of permissions to data and resources. This is really important part of a good data governance strategy and users should only be permitted the access that is required for their system objectives. And lastly, we have compliant. Since this is very important for organizations to have a very strong grasp on the data they are collecting, mainly if the organization is collecting personal and identifiable information. 
So having this data structured and managed appropriately is key in ensuring your organization is compliant. Um, here's a quick example to help illustrate the importance. So we have three different users preparing separate data files containing the same level of information. Then these files will be added to a shared folder and then another user will pick these files, gather all of them into a single database and use that for reporting purposes. The manual effort this end user will have to treat that data with no standards is quite big. And if any of the individual files need to be changed, that might affect all the subsequent layers. So this is an example of poor data governance. Instead of working that way, we can make these users feed their data into a specific format or schema, which in turn gets picked up and used for reporting. This would reduce a lot the manual effort all these users would have while also making it easier to make changes to data. This would be a simple example of the implementation of some data governance principles. It is important to notice that to achieve this, these users will need a tool that can enable data governance, and this is where Power Apps can come in. Now, let's talk about Power Apps more specifically. Power Apps is, a, is an offering from Microsoft, and it is built on the Power Platform, which is geared towards non-technical users. It provides a no-code or low-code interface for building business-relevant applications, and there are a ton of different things you can do with Power Apps. It is quite simple to get started with it. There are many different preview templates for different use cases, and you can use one of these to quickly start integrating your own data and make it your own app. You can also start building your applications from scratch. It is also really simple. You can just drag and drop features to get your desired results. Can create apps which can greatly improve your data governance by integrating changes to data with your many data sources, while also creating a standardized process that all users can follow and that can be documented to ensure compliance with regulations. In addition, there are even a variety of advanced capabilities you can integrate to create a fully customized tool, from configuring different controls, adding in galleries of data, and even integrating other automation features, there is a lot of flexibility in what you can do with the tool while maintaining control over the app and the connections to your data. In terms of connecting to data, Power Apps has a wide range of building connectors to choose from. It can both retrieve and update data in your data sources, making it a very efficient interface for non-technical users to be able to update complex underlying tables in a really simple way. So now Laura and we'll pick up from here and continue the presentation with a demo of a data governance solution with Power Apps. All right, thank you, Felipe. So I'm going to talk through the demo use case and then show you the solution. So how can we apply these principles to a business use case? Take these two tables where the same company is inputting data for the promotions of brand A and brand B. Both of these tables give the same information, when the promotion occurred, the quantity of items needed for the promotion, and the value of the promotion. However, a user can't compare the strategies of brand A and brand B from a data perspective because the tables are formatted differently. There could be confusion when comparing the data, and it gets even more complicated when trying to bring these two tables into one reporting tool. With large organizations, it's very possible for two brands to have two different methods of planning, which is inherently bad governance. A solution to this is a centralized tool that takes the uniqueness out of those formats and makes them uniform. This would improve the data governance, facilitate the ability to report, and allow for some sort of analytics on it down the road. And this is where Power Apps comes in. So the specific use case I will be using today is a consumer goods company that buys external point of sales data across several retailers to track its sales. Currently, the promotions planning team has multiple tables to plan its promotions, but wants to bring the promotions planning into a central tool. Some of the requirements of the solution are that the user should be able to view historical sales data with respect to promotions data, as well as input and update the promotions plan data. An individual should be able to interact with their promotions plan for the upcoming calendar year, but also report additional internal and external data. Where this solution can get complicated is where it combines brands that may format or report their data very differently. 
So instead of having every brand plan their promotions in their own distinct format, we can use something like Power Apps to create a more robust data-centered planner. So here's how the solution is laid out. It starts with the promotions planner who can input, edit, and view the promotions data in the Power App. The Power App writes promotions data directly to a SQL table. And at the same time, the external point of sales data is uploaded directly to SQL. Then the SQL table is used for a Power BI dashboard where the user can visualize the two sets of data and use those insights to plan future promotions. And so now I'm going to walk you through the actual solution. So here we have a Power BI dashboard where the external point of sales data and promotions data can be viewed side by side. This way, the planning team can see the correlation between promotions and sales. So this graph here, we have the sales dollars as the line and the bars are the number of promotions that happened during that time period. On this dashboard, the user has filtering and drill down capabilities. So as you can see here on the right, there are filters for brand, product type, and product subtype. Um, I'm currently filtered to brand 18. I can uncheck that to see the total across all brands. And as well, I can filter by product type and product subtype. And then additionally, I can drill down into the time periods. So let's say I was interested in August of 2021. I can drill down into August of 2021 and see the sales and promotions across the weeks of that month. So what would a user come and do in this dashboard? I might look and see that in August of 2021, I had successful promotions that were specific to this brand 18 product type A subtype two when it was specifically purchase three and get $1 off. So once I have this information, I can go into my Power App and I can begin to plan that same promotion for let's say December of 2021. I will note that I'm using December of 2021 for the purposes of this webcast and promotions are typically planned much further in advance. So I'm now going to head into my Power App where I can do three different things. So I get to the welcome screen of this Power App and the first thing I can do is view the data. So this table here is actually the same table that was in the Power BI dashboard and what this table shows is information about individual promotions. So the brand, the product type, subtype, when it began, when it ended, the value of the promotion, so how many dollars off, and how many products the user had to buy in order to get that promotion. So for example, buy three, get $2 off. And so in this view pane, I have filtering capabilities as well. So just like I filtered in the Power BI dashboard, I can filter this Power App to brand 18 to see when every single occurrence of a brand 18 promotion. And so in theory, you can add filtering capabilities in your Power App for every single one of the columns in this table. And so uh, once I've viewed this data, like I said, I want to plan a new promotion, which was the same as that August 2021 promotion, except in December. So I can go into my enter data pane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type all the information that I wanted. So I wanted a brand 18 product type A product sub type two. And I wanted to start it today, end it, let's say December 27th. And the one that was successful was I wanted buy three, get a dollar off. So I enter that data into the Power App. The Power App tells me it was successful. And then I can go back and I can edit my data. So this is the same table that you saw in the view pane as well as the Power BI dashboard, and I can see this new record. And so what I can do here is I can realize, oh no, I meant to put product subtype two and not product subtype three. So I have this record selected and I can edit it. So I can change it back to what I wanted. I wanted product subtype two and I can edit the data. The Power App tells me it was successful. And you can see that the data has already changed in this uh, data table here. And so what the Power App is doing here is it's 
writing this data directly back to that SQL table. So when I go back to my Power BI dashboard, um, which is also connected to the SQL table, I should be able to see this new record. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, is I'm back here. So right now you can see that there are no promotions in December of 2021, but I'm going to refresh this dashboard and once my record is going to show up. And so while it loads, I will call out that Power Apps has audibility and security features. So what I could have done in that uh, Power App was add the capability to um, note which users are inputting and editing the data. And I can also do some restriction of access. So I can uh, tailor who's allowed to uh, input and update that data. And so now that my Power BI dashboard is refreshed, uh, you can see that there is one new promotion in December of 2021. So if I click down into that, I can see that this is exactly the record that I just put um, into the Power App. And so it all ties back together. And so now, once we have shown that, I'm going to go back into the slides and talk about some of the business considerations of a solution like this. So to help you think deeper about your situation, we've listed some considerations. So the first is downstream impact. So do groups downstream ingest your data into their systems? And does it need a specific format? Is it reasonable to ask them to modify their process? Uh, does the current infrastructure currently exist to distribute reports? So for example, does everyone have a Power BI license or do the consumers of the report even know how to use Power BI? On the other side of that is upstream impact. You may not think of this one at first, but does, is changing your method also changing how you ingest data? Do you need to receive the data differently? And how much additional effort will be required by the upstream group? And then what tools are available in your company? Are, are, are other groups already using tools like Power Apps and Power BI? And then we have upskilling. This solution only works if your team is ready to use it. Do they need to learn a new process or a new tool? And who's going to teach them? And then lastly, we have ownership. Who manages the solution after it's built and who's going to improve on it? These are just a few points to consider as you adopt your Power App solution. And now I'm going to wrap us up. So let's talk about how Thoroughgood fits into this. We specialize in advanced analytics, data science, machine learning, AI, and more. We come from a business-focused perspective and tailor a solution to best fit the needs of our clients. So here are some examples of some of the things we do. We do exploratory analytics to answer business questions, test hypotheses, and discover new models to drive business value. We do MLOps and DevOps industrialization of existing use cases into production scale systems, analytics architecture design projects to enable data science, ML, and AI at the enterprise scale, data democratization enablement via a number of user empowerment projects and data lake offerings to achieve enterprise-wide data accessibility, analytics empowerment programs to promote adoption of models and tools, multi-cloud infrastructure enablement initiatives to fully realize the value of various cloud services. And lastly, analytics strategy projects to advise on the people, data, tools, and processes needed to realize the value of AI and ML. We pretty much have experience in anything in this space, and we would love the opportunity to learn more about what initiatives you're planning. So I definitely encourage you guys to reach out to us. We have our contact info up here on the slide again if you have any questions or would like to set up a time to discuss initiatives you're working on. Please don't hesitate to reach out on behalf of Felipe and myself. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. <laughs>